Hello all my art friends! This is Dawn with Painted Willow Art and this is our Monday Paint Along for Monday, May 4th. Um, you can do it any day you want, but today's Monday, May 4th. I put up a poll online over the last couple days to decide whether we wanted to paint these cute little mystic houses or the mushrooms and the mushrooms won. So today we're going to do the mushrooms. We'll do these next week, okay? So you're still getting both, just we're gonna do the mushrooms first. So this is what we're gonna be painting today. Some cute little um, whimsical mushrooms. For the supplies for this today, we're gonna use a piece of watercolor paper. This is six by nine. Um, I, I usually have nine by 12 pads of watercolor paper, so I just split them in half. So this is just half of that sheet. We're going to use a number eight round brush. And I think I've mentioned before that, that brushes can vary by manufacturer. Number eight isn't necessarily a number eight across the board most of the time. So it's just a medium sized round watercolor brush. I'm gonna use a Micron Pigma 0.05 pen to draw the mushrooms with. You can use Sharpies sometimes. Um, I like the Microns because they don't bleed when you put water on them. So we can draw it first with this and then going over it with the watercolor, it's not gonna bleed. Sharpies sometimes do, sometimes don't. I find it's kind of dependent on the paper. Um, I did use a Sharpie to do the demo version, this one. And it's on the same paper and it didn't bleed. This is, um, Yep, I can't remember what kind of paper that is. I have so much of it laying around. Anyway, um, you can try with Sharpies. I would suggest just doing a little test swatch first to make sure that it doesn't bleed when you put water over it. But sometimes those do work. For today, I'm gonna use the Micron just because I'm certain that's not gonna bleed. Um, I've got a little jug of water ready. And for today, I'm gonna use a single palette of paint. These are all by Artistic Isle. They're handmade watercolors. Um, I'm going to use a quinacridone magenta and a French vermilion for the mushrooms themselves. Those are the reds and the pinks. Um, she's got a buff titanium that I'm going to use for the stems. And then we're going to use a little bit of her sand color to highlight the stems. And her olive green for the bottom. And then I've got a couple of metallics that I'm going to use for the, the dots on the mushrooms. You do not have to have this exact same palette nor do you need to use the exact same colors I'm using. Because these are intended to be whimsical little mushrooms, there doesn't have to be anything realistic about these at all. You can do them absolutely whatever color you want. So, um, well, well, I do highly recommend the Artistic Isle paints. Um, they're really fantastic, creamy paints. Certainly, you don't need to go out and buy any special supplies for this. Use whatever watercolors you have on hand and make your mushrooms whatever color you want them to be, okay? So we're going to start this by drawing the mushrooms themselves, and um, they're really easy to draw because they're whimsical. We're not really concerned with how exact their size and shape are. I'm going to do something similar to this one in that we're going to have a bigger one in the middle and then two smaller ones on the sides. So the easiest way to draw that is that I'm just going to draw like a little bell shape. And I'm not terribly worried. Oh, my pen's running out. I'm not terribly worried about whether it's straight and perfect. I'm just gonna come down around the corners and come across the bottom. So we've got kind of a little gumdrop thing going. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, make another little gumdrop. I obviously need a new pen. And over here, same thing, only I'm gonna make it a little taller gumdrop this time. Okay. So we're not worried about how crooked or straight those lines are because these are our whimsical little mushrooms anyway. For the stems, I want the stem to kind of be in the middle. So I put my little dots there so I can kind of see approximately where the middle is. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm just gonna come down, round off the bottom a little bit and go right back up to where that second dot is. Again, I'm not terribly worried about whether this is straight or not. And I'm gonna do kind of the same thing over here, only I'm gonna curve them down just a little bit 
so they look like they're reaching the ground so that they're all kind of sort of at the same spot. So there we go. We got our little mushrooms in. We do need to make them look like mushrooms. So I'm gonna come back and put just a little line under the bottom of each of them. And I'm kind of trying to work around my camera, so I'm, I'm gonna move my paper around a little bit. Certainly while you're drawing and painting, um, feel free to move your paper around as well. You don't have to leave it in the same spot all the time. And then mushrooms have the little baffles in them underneath. So we're gonna do the same thing. And those are just straight lines starting at the stem, headed out towards the edge. So there we go. Basic mushroom. We want these to have some fun little dots on them. So I'm gonna go in and just put a couple of circles here and there. You can make them different sizes if you want to. Make one or two of them kind of run off the edge a little bit, like they're going around the back side of the mushroom. Do the same thing on your little guys. I wouldn't put too terribly many of them on these little guys because they can be a little bit hard to paint around. We're not going to use any kind of masking fluid with these today. So just a few here and there. And there's our basic mushroom. Okay. I am going to start by painting the top part of the mushroom first and on this one I'm going to use a French vermilion for this but before I actually start painting I'm going to take a wet brush, I'm just getting water on my brush, and I'm going to come in and just kind of paint the water all over the mushroom itself avoiding the dots. So go around the dots. And what I'm doing is just putting down a layer of water that's going to let the paint run a little, a little easier. Because I want it to have kind of that blotchy um, signature watercolor bleed look. And that happens a whole lot easier if you've got a background of water to begin with. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, there's not, there's not a ton of water. Um, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of sheen on the surface there. That's what we're going for. Just a little bit of a shiny surface on there. And then I'm going to get my brush wet again. And I'm just going, I don't know if you can see my palette from there. I can't tell where my camera's looking. Um, I'm just going straight into the paint. I'm not diluting it first. And I'm going to start on one side. And you can see when I first lay down that paint, it's really vibrant, really bright. And you can see that it kind of wants to bleed because we've already got the water down. So I'm just going to take all of that dark color and start pulling it towards the other side of the mushroom. Because what that's going to do is kind of bleed it out and leave one side darker and one side lighter so it will almost look like lights coming from this side. You certainly don't have to do that, but it does give your painting a, a little extra bit of dimension. So because it's already wet, I'm able to just drag my brush through that color and pull it to the other side. Now, if it starts to get kind of washed out, like this is getting over here and you want to add some more color to it, certainly do go back into your paint. And again, put it on the same side you started on because we want that to be the dark side. And just start pulling it towards the other side. And we're just filling in all around the dots by pulling that paint towards the other side of the mushroom. This is one of the fun things about watercolors, the way it moves. Um, it can be fun or it can be frustrating depending on, on your perspective. Some days it's both. but it's kind of unpredictable. And you can just pull it and drag it wherever you want it to go. So that's all I'm gonna do on that one. And you can see 
that I've got a little darker over here and a little lighter over here. So that's that's kind of giving, assuming my light source is coming from this side. And we're going to stick with that same thing all the way through. So as we do these other two mushrooms, we're going to do them the same way, but we're going to start with the dark on the same side and pull it over to the other side. Now on these other two, I'm going to do essentially the same thing. So I'm going to go in and paint my water background here. And you don't need a ton of water. Again, you're looking for just a little bit of a shiny sheen on the surface. And this time I'm going to use quinacridone magenta. Um, this is a really vibrant pink color. Keep in mind that when you put these on, watercolors often dry a little lighter than they initially go on. So something like this one, where it's it's really vibrant to begin with, sometimes kind of makes people go, ah! um, but it's not going to dry quite that vibrant. And I'm doing the same thing I did with the first one. I started on this side so that I'm starting on the same dark side. And I'm just pulling the paint across because the surface is already wet. It's easy to pull by just dragging your brush through it. And I'm going to drag a little bit back this direction because I got too much dark over here for what I wanted. So I'm just dragging it back the other way. So there we got that one. And then we're going to do the same thing on this one over here. Again, I'm just painting my background with the water. And I'm not being too terribly exact around these dots. I'm, I'm just kind of squiggling around it. And you can see I kind of got in the dot there and there's some white. Because these are intended to be whimsical, I'm not really concerned with them being um, absolutely perfect. So if you've got little white spots here and there or you go into the, into the dot a little bit with the paint, it's okay. That kind of adds to the whimsical look of it. So I'm using the same quinacridone magenta on this one. And again, you can use whatever colors you want to on yours. Because they're whimsical, you could make them purple if you wanted. It would be just fine. And I'm just dragging the paint across to the other side. So I have my dark side over here and my light side over here. There we go, we got little mushrooms. Now at this point, before I go on and do the stems, I wanna make sure the mushroom tops themselves are dry because if I get my stem color up against where this is a little bit wet still, that those pinks and reds are gonna bleed down into the stems and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna hit this with a blow dryer real quick and I'm gonna speed up the video so you can kind of see it but you don't have to hear the blow dryer. So what I would recommend is that you pause right here, go grab your blow dryer, blow dry this until those paints are dry. It just takes a minute or two and then we'll come back and, and finish. So I'm going to blow dry mine real quick. Okay. <clears throat> Finished drying. Um, what I want you to show you, show you here real quick before we go on with the steps is that you'll notice it dried a whole lot lighter than what we initially put on. And this little mushroom in particular, you can see it doesn't have much gradient. Like this one, you can definitely see the darker to the lighter and the darker to the lighter. If you end up with something like this and you want to go back in and put a little more of this color on the side to give it a darker look on that side, you certainly can. You can put another layer on there. I'm not going to do that for the purpose of, of keeping the video moving, but there's no reason. You couldn't go back and add another layer on there if you wanted to make that a little darker just to accentuate the, the dark to light gradient if you want a little bit. Okay? For right now, we're going to move on and do the stems. And I'm going to do the same thing with the stems. I'm going to paint a little bit of water over the stem. And then I'm going to go into, in my palette, it's called Buff Titanium. It's just kind of a really light, light tan color. And I'm just going to paint it in. And same thing, I want the dark to be on the same side as my dark up here. That way we're staying consistent with where the light is. It just gives a good perspective to your painting. 
and I'm just dragging that around to fill the stem. Now, if you end up with too much of the dark over on your light side, just drag it back towards the dark side. As it dries, it'll kind of all pool over there. And I'm doing the same thing here. And I am, I am rinsing my brush a little bit in between so that I'm coming in with fairly clear water for the water layer. Because we're using the same color on all the stems, you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just habit for me. Now, this one, because this stem is a little smaller than this one, I get too much paint on this all the way across the board. You can see it's covering my black line here. So I rinsed my brush off and wiped it on a paper towel. And I'm just going back and running my brush over some of those dark spots to lift them off. If your brush is a little bit dry and you go back over this, it will actually wipe some of that paint off so you can lift off some of that heavy stuff if you want to. So I'm just wiping my brush across it, picking up a little bit of that paint, wiping it on a paper towel and coming back to it and doing the same thing. So I'm essentially creating my light side over here because I had too much paint. Now we're going to do this one the same way. Give it a coat of water. And you can see I got some water up onto my pink and it wanted to start bleeding down there. So I just ran my finger across it to, to stop that because I don't want that pink to bleed down into my stem. Okay, now I do wanna add a little bit more of an accent to the dark side of these stems. So I'm cleaning my brush off and I'm gonna grab just a little bit of a darker brown color, not a whole lot. And I'm just gonna kinda of dot it down this dark side here. And you can see how, because that's still wet from when I put the water on it, it just kinda of wants to bleed into the other side and that's all I really want it to do. So I'm just running down the dark side of my stem and just putting a little dot here and there. Not even, I'm not even swiping my brush as a regular brush stroke, I'm just dotting it. And you can see we get some dimensions to the stem that way. So I'm gonna blow dry this again real quick. So I'm gonna pause you for a second while I blow dry. You go do the same thing on yours because we need to put some darker up under here. But again, I want this to be dry because I don't want it to be running into the stem. So pause here for a second, go dry your painting. I'm gonna do the same thing on mine. Okay, hopefully we're recording. Um, I am so sorry, everybody. I came back from blow drying my stems to paint in the bottom shadows and hit record and for some reason it didn't record. So. Um, I want to show you what I did here real quick because I can't redo it because I've already done it. After I blow dried my stems, I wanted to come back into these underneath parts and add a little bit of a shadow under there. So the same brown that I used to dot on the darker side of the stems, I used under here. And I just went into straight brown paint to make those a little darker under there. Now, if you'll notice, much like on this little mushroom here, where he didn't end up with much of a gradient, some of the stems really didn't end up with much of a gradient. So if you wanted to, you could go back in and add a little more brown to the dark side of these stems. And I'm just going straight into to my darker brown color and I'm just gonna run it down the edge. I don't have a ton of paint on the brush. I'm gonna come back and dot it a little bit. Um, just a little bit to darken one side. Just give it a little bit of a shadow. And when that dries, it'll give you that little bit of a, a dark down the one side of it. So if you end up with not as much shading as you want, you can always go back in and add another layer to it, add a little more paint to it. Okay. Um, now that I added paint to that, I'm going to have to dry those real quick before we do the next part. So I'm going to pause for just a second and I'm going to dry those. Okay, I just hit those stems with the blow dryer real quick. And, um, you know, depending on what it is you're working on and how much you do or don't want the colors to bleed, having a blow dryer handy while you're painting is always a good idea because you could just hit it real quick with a blow dryer to dry the pieces you want to stay put before you go on to the next thing. It, it really is um, a handy 
tip to keep in your toolbox there. So the next thing I want to do, like the original, is add some green down here at the bottom just to make them look like they're sitting in the grass a little bit. And I'm going to turn mine sideways just because it's a better angle for me. You can certainly do this at whatever, whatever angle you want. And what I'm going to do is, much like we did the tops of the mushrooms, I'm going to take just straight water on my brush. And I'm going to kind of paint around these stems a little bit a field of water. And I'm, I'm looking for the same kind of thing we had on the mushroom tops themselves. Just a little bit of a sheen to the paper. I don't know if I can get it in this light. Hopefully. Um, you might be able to see. There's just a little bit of a shiny sheen to the paper. So I don't, I don't want it too, too wet. Just a little bit of a shiny sheen. Because what I want is for the green to travel and bleed a little bit. So I'm going to go into my olive green. And it, it's a really pretty kind of mossy green. And I'm just going to start dropping some paint randomly. I'm just going to kind of squish it around. I'm not being too terribly careful with this here because I want it to have a little bit of a, a faded out, blended out look. And I want a little bit more because I know that's going to dry lighter than it looks right now. So I'm just going to keep going in and picking up paint, dropping a little bit of paint into that water field until I feel like I've got it how I want it. Um, I'm not necessarily going all the way to the edge of the page on either side. You can if you want add a little bit more water to, to kind of soften up some of those lines. And it gives it just a little bit of a look like it's on the ground. Um, leave some dark spots here and there. You don't want it to be all the same color all the way across. Those dark spots give it a little bit of depth. And if you want to, you can always go in and just add with the very tip of your brush and very light pressure, you can add a few little sprigs of grass if you want or something like that to, to give it a little character. So there we go. The mushrooms are done. The ground is done. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, my paper's starting to buckle a little bit. Um, watercolor does that to paper. It makes the paper buckle and bend. I did not tape this down to anything. Often people will tape their paper to a board before they start working. I didn't because I wanted to be able to turn it easily and because I've got limited space with my camera here, um, I've not taped mine down. Whether you do or whether you don't is completely personal preference. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. When you don't, it can often give you some really interesting paint spots because as that paint buckles and warps, the paint's going to settle in the low spots. And if it settles where you don't want it to, you can always tip up your paper and, you know, kind of move it around while the paint is still wet. So whether you tape it down or not is completely up to you. Um, while, I'm going to turn it this way so I'm not sticking my hand in it. While that grass section is drying, I'm going to go in and add some color to my dots. Now, if you like them white, certainly leave them white. Um, but there are some fun metallic paints in my little pan here. I've got a pretty gold. So I'm just gonna pick up a bunch of that gold metallic paint and I'm just gonna go right into the dots and just leave splotches of color in those dots. I'm not being real precise about it. There's a little bit of white around the edges and that's okay. Again, we're going for whimsical here so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So essentially what I'm doing is just leaving splotches of that color, that gold colored paint in the middle of each of the dots on my mushroom. So what's going to happen once those dry, hopefully you can see on the original here, once those dry, as you get it differently in the light, you can kind of see that metallic shimmer a little bit. So it just adds a little bit of fun to them. You don't have to use a metallic paint. I am just a big fan of anything metallic paint. <laughs> and I've got a couple more. I've got a blue metallic and I've got a purple metallic. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my other two mushrooms. I'm gonna use my blue first here. And I'm just leaving dots of paint. Now, I got quite a bit of paint on my brush. I don't know that I necessarily want that much. So I'm just gonna dot my brush off on a paper towel that dries my brush a little bit, so when I go back in, I'm able to pick up some of that excess paint off the dots that had too much and just tap it into the ones that I want it in. 
I'm going to do the same thing with purple, my metallic purple over here. Now, because I'm basically just making big purple dots in the middle, those are going to take a few minutes to dry, unless you want to hit them with your blow dryer. Completely up to you. Let them dry on their own or give them a little blow dry. And then once those are, are dried, you'll have a pretty metallic sheen on those if you used a metallic. If you didn't use a metallic, you can certainly color those dots in with anything that you have. Or like I said, leave them white if you like them white. That's perfectly fine too. So I'm going to pause this again for just a second so I can blow dry my dots. Okay, I blew my dots dry because I didn't want to be sticking my hand in them while I'm doing some additional things. Um, at this point in the game, I'm not terribly happy with this painting because um, I didn't like what my pen did to begin with. My lines aren't as dark as I want them, and you can see because they're not very dark, sometimes there's paint over the lines, and I just want to clean that up a little bit. So I, I deliberately left it that way while I was painting. I, I knew as I was going along I wasn't going to be happy with it. But I wanted to show you how you can take something that you're not 100% happy with and fix it to a certain extent to make it something that you are more happy with it. I'm going to go back in with my Sharpie because I know this pen's working a little bit better than my other one. I hadn't realized my other one was about out of ink. Um, this one's got a much better ink supply in it. And I'm just going to go back over some of this with my Sharpie. And what that's going to let me do is fix some of these lines a bit. Maybe. I'm doing this at a weird angle with my camera. So I'm just going back in over the original lines a bit. And I'm just kind of cleaning them up. Some of them are going to end up a little thicker here and there, and that's okay. These are whimsical, so that gives a little bit more dimension to what you're doing. I'm going to clean up my circles a little bit too, just because I can. So I'm just tracing back over those original lines that I drew. I'm making sure they're how I want them. So there we go. That's better. Now I still want to add a little bit of um, a little bit of fun to this. So I'm going to add some things down here in the grass, just some little doodles, and I'm also going to add some embellishment on the mushrooms themselves. Now, ultimately when I'm done, I'm going to go back over these other two mushrooms and do the same thing. I'm going to trace that, but just for the sake of time right now, I'll leave them how they are and just show you on the big one. Um, down here in the grass, just to give it a little bit of fun, I'm just going to put a few curly cues. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing them. It's just going to make it look almost like, you know, fun little grass bits or something like that. It just gives it kind of a nice little finished look to it there. I also like to add some embellishment to the mushrooms themselves. Again, because they're whimsical, they're not intended to be botanically correct. So we can have all kinds of fun with these. So just the most simple lines can add a whole bunch to your drawing. So I'm just going to go in and add like little parentheses around my dots. I put a couple little lines out here and I'm going to put some dots on the stem. And you can see that fairly quickly that transforms the whole look of that mushroom. We go from something fairly plain to all of a sudden something that's got a little bit of fun to it. If you want, you can even go back in and put dots in the middle of the dots. This part is really kind of up to your imagination, whatever you want to do with it to make it fun. And I would do the same thing to the rest of these. I would trace around them just to kind of make me a little happier with those lines. 
And I know part of this is I'm struggling with this camera. I don't have a fantastic filming setup, so hopefully y'all bear with me on that part. I'm working around <laughs> the footing of my tripod. <laughs> uh, There we go. Just in cleaning up those lines, it makes a world of difference. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to go in and add some weird little random lines here and there. If you do something like this, it makes it almost look like a little, a little bit of a morel mushroom. And again, some little dots on my stem. So you can add whatever little embellishments you want to 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 jazz those up a little bit, completely up to your imagination. But at this point, essentially, you've got a finished little painting. So there you go. If you do the paint along, I would love to see what you create. If you feel like posting them online on Facebook or Instagram, please tag me so I can see. <laughs> um, and if you don't want to post them publicly, you're always welcome to email them or message them to me. I, I love to see what people come up with because ideally, this is the jumping off spot for you. This is just to show you some general things, but let your creativity run wild with it. Your mushrooms can be whatever color you want them to be. They can be whatever shape you want them to be. They don't, they don't even necessarily have to be gumdrop shaped. You could make them really tall. You could make them short and round, however you want to do it. So um, this gives you kind of a, a technique jumping off spot, but certainly add your own creativity to it. Okay. I'm going to leave us there for today. Like I said, if you try it, I would love to see what you come up with and stay tuned for next week because next week we'll do us some funky little houses. Okay. Thanks everybody.